So Apple launched a new iPad Pro with M5 chip last week, the most powerful iPad they've ever released. And today I have the privilege of getting to speak to two people who can give us an insight into what's special about this product and some of Apple's thinking behind it. We have Ted Merendino from Apple's iPad product marketing team and Ty Jordan, who's involved with software as product manager for system experience at Apple. Thanks for your time today, gentlemen, and I'd love to get straight into it. There's a new iPad. And so Ted, could you tell me a bit about the new M5 iPad Pro? What's new about it? What was Apple thinking um, when they released it at this particular point in time? And maybe as a follow-up, Ty, could you tell us about the accompanying iPad OS 26 update? So first of all, thank you so much for having us. It's nice to see you again, um, Samuel. Uh, we did, we just introduced this new um, iPad Pro. We couldn't be more excited. You know, iPad Pro, um, it is all about delivering our most advanced iPad experience. Um, it has a combination of our world's best display. It has the extraordinary performance of our latest M series chips. You have, you know, advanced connectivity, um, incredible accessories, and all these things kind of come together to make it a really distinct uh, device that is incredibly popular with all sorts of different people, um, multidisciplinary creators. Uh, photographers, videographers, 3D designers, um, illustrators, uh, you know, people who are taking a lot of notes, uh, business professionals. I think what's unique, though, is it's for all these people who are looking to kind of extend their workflows into new and different ways. And of, and of course, it's also great for anyone in your audience who's just looking for that ultimate iPad experience. That's what iPad Pro delivers. So with this latest iPad Pro, um, we are introducing um, the Apple M5 chip, and the M5 chip delivers a huge boost in performance, and it takes this next big leap for AI capabilities on iPad. Um, the reason it does that, or how it does that, I should say, you have a powerful neural engine. We've had a neural engine for a long time. Uh, you also have powerful neural accelerators in the CPU, but we're adding now a neural accelerator in each GPU core that um, enables kind of incredible uh, AI performance in the GPU. And I think we'll probably talk more about this. You also have uh, you know, faster and more memory. You've got two times faster read-write storage speeds. So moving large files back and forth is, is faster than ever. And um, running on all of it is iPadOS 26, um, which I, surely you'll, you'll be familiar with. And we're lucky to have Ty here to talk about just kind of how transformative iPadOS 26 is. Thanks, Ted, and thanks, Samuel, for having us on as well. Uh, we are so excited about iPadOS 26. We announced it earlier this year at WWDC, uh, recently launched it out to customers, and the reception has just been phenomenal. Um, so for people who aren't familiar, it includes an all-new design with liquid gloss that makes the entire experience more expressive and delightful, while still maintaining that familiarity we all have with iPadOS. It has some big updates to Apple Intelligence as well, becomes more capable with new features to help users communicate, express themselves, and get more done. Um, one of our favorite features there from Apple Intelligence is the ability to access Apple Intelligence models directly from shortcuts, and people are doing some amazing things with it. And then, of course, iPadOS 26 is a huge update if you want to be productive with iPad, starting with a really amazing, robust new windowing system that gives you greater flexibility and the ability to work across more apps at once. Uh, we also have huge updates to the Files app with a new list view and collapsible folders that make it so much easier to manage all your files. Also, you can put folders in the dock so you can access them from anywhere. And for creators like yourself, we've also introduced great features like uh, local capture, which captures high quality audio and video content, uh, which is perfect because we're using that right now on the new iPad Pros with M5. So we couldn't be more excited about all these updates and how people are feeling about them. You know, I think the iPad's been a remarkable product for many years. I've used it as a student to take notes, to own my learning as a educator, to uh, brainstorm ideas, to teach students along with my colleagues. Um, and I've also used it as a professional, as a monitor alongside my Mac to edit videos as a really tactile experience in editing photos. It can be a lot of what people want it to be, um, all in a really thin glass slab. I'm keen just to know in terms of experiences and things people can do with it, with the shift to M5, what new creative possibilities does this update unlock? So let's talk about more uh, about this M5. So with M5, I talked a moment ago that you have the neural accelerator in each GPU core. 
And that unlocks some pretty impressive things. So on-device image generation is incredible. Um, no longer do you have to do things kind of in the cloud. You can do that on device. Um, it's up to two times faster than an iPad with an M4 and uh, four times faster than an iPad with an M1. Um, it's also great for things like um, video segmentation. So if you're doing, you know, applying segmentation models to high resolution video, um, you have much faster performance in apps like uh, DaVinci Resolve. These neural accelerators really speed up these GPU-based um, AI tasks. Another kind of cool example is for musicians and producers. So this level of performance is, you know, enhancing apps like Mic Drop that allow a producer to, you know, change the tone of a voice almost instantly. So you can, you know, envision how this would be, you know, really, really helpful for someone who is uh, wanting to be more creative and looking for performance to enhance that. I was just going to say on the iPad OS side, you know, mm -hmm. the speed improvements really have a great impact across all the different features that we've introduced this year. So of course, it's going to make when you're working across multiple apps, it's windowing system better. It's going to make background tasks run faster. Everything just gets a whole lot quicker. And it's this continuation of the work that the teams have done to evolve Apple Silicon that have made many of these innovations possible this year with iPad OS 26. Just to follow up on that, Ty, is there a feature in iPad OS 26 that doesn't get a lot of attention, but you wish people knew about it? I'm excited about what the preview app is going to do for a lot of students mm -hmm. in particular. Uh, you know, one of the things that I've heard quite a lot of is students work a lot with PDFs now. Most of their class and syllabuses are coming through digitally. And so they're not managing a bunch of textbooks like we used to do in our backpacks. They're managing this huge volume of PDFs. And so having a dedicated place for all of those and having markup tools readily available is just huge for them. Uh, so that's one that I haven't seen as much coverage for, but I think it's it's really exciting for those students. Ted, I remember when Steve Jobs first introduced the iPad and it was distinctly this product that sat between a laptop and an iPhone with its own unique identity. And since then, there's always been pressure from customers to sway it in either direction. Um, but I'm keen to know today in 2025, what's the direction the iPad is heading in? Uh you know, I, I don't think it's dissimilar from the way that Steve introduced it at the very beginning. It's probably different, though, in the in what um, customers want to do with it. So, uh, you know, our North Star uh, continues to be the incredible versatility of iPad that enables these distinct capabilities. Um, and that ability to transform into whatever a user needs it to be in the moment, no matter where they are. That's kind of the hallmark of, of iPad. Um, and, and users can enjoy it just with touch, or they can attach a keyboard, um, or they can use an Apple Pencil Pro, um, and it becomes this notebook or, or a canvas. Um, it has these great cameras front and back. It has a LiDAR scanner for things like room scanning. And on top of that, it's extremely you know thin, light, and portable that means these, these workflows can happen in new places in new ways. And so um, I think at the highest level, like you were saying, um, it still is this distinct thing, um, uh, unlike other forms of computing that makes, uh, that makes iPad so appealing to so many different types of people. So even though we want it to be more powerful and more capable, we also have to make sure it remains approachable for everyone to be able to use it. And that can sometimes be a really tough design and engineering challenge uh, to accomplish that. And we're really excited about how we've done that with iPadOS 26. A good example is the windowing system. You know, it's this really robust system that's super powerful. It lets users work across lots of apps at the same time. It has fluid resizing and placement. You have window controls, you have tiling. All of these things are built in. But even with such a powerful system, it was so important to us that, you know, the first time you launch an app, it's still full screen and it's still as simple and easy to use as before. And that kind of speaks to that North Star of keeping iPad as this distinct, very simple and approachable device, even as it becomes more powerful. Yeah, I can see the way Apple's wrestled with that over the years. And it's cool, like I iPad still has its distinct identity. It's interesting though, when you put the iPad on the Magic Keyboard, it essentially has all the hardware components of a Mac. And one of the questions you'll hear a lot of students demand of the iPad is, can this thing replace a laptop? And I'm okay, just from a software point of view, do you think the iPad is getting close to replacing a laptop or 
is it intentionally not trying to? You know, we, internally, we don't really think about it and sit back and think, how do we add features to this so that iPad can replace a laptop? Uh, we're much more focused on what are the powerful capabilities that our users want that are going to enable the workflows that they want to use iPad for. And so we take a lot of time to think quite intentionally about those experiences. So this year, you know, we talked about windowing as one example of it, but you see that permeate as a pattern throughout everything that we did. The, the menu bar is a great example. That's something that's very traditional for a Mac, but we brought it to iPad in a very distinct way. It only shows up when you need it. Uh, folders in the dock, the same thing. If you never want to think about file management and you have an iPad, you never have to know that folders can even be in the dock. But the moment you download something from Safari and they become useful, it's going to show up. Mm -hmm. So all these different pieces are really critical for us to bring these capabilities to iPad, but still, again, maintain that simplicity as much as we can. Um, and I think that's what keeps iPad as its sort of own category. We've, you know, we've seen our users want to do more on iPad, and we have delivered advanced capabilities that kind of complement those. In some ways, uh, it's supporting workflows that are similar to a laptop. You know, we've brought great keyboard support. We've got keyboard shortcuts. We've done, um, we've done these types of things. But at the same time, you know, we're always also trying to kind of push the boundaries of uh, technologies in this you know, new kind of distinct direction. I think Apple Pencil Pro is, is a great example of that where, um, you know, it's, it's a totally unique thing on iPad and, and we, brought, um, we brought Hover, but then we brought Barrel Roll, we brought Squeeze um, and made those technologies available to our, um, to our uh, you know, app community. And um, that has just pushed in this whole different sort of vector that is uniquely iPad. And so um, when we look back at, you know, uh, our, our iPad user base, particularly iPad Pro, people buy it because they, they want the ultimate iPad experience. That's that's why they come to iPad. Mm. What's been really cool to see is with the introduction of the Magic Keyboard, in software, we've seen apps sort of resemble components of desktop apps. An example of that would be Final Cut Pro. Um, but I take, I'll take i take two other apps, Pages and Keynote. I use, I use those apps every day on my Mac. They're incredibly functional. I actually think they're quite powerful when you push them to their limits um, in terms of design publishing, designing posters, etc., and big, big documents. I notice that when I use those apps on my iPad, they have less features and functionality. And my only thinking behind that is I can clearly see how those apps have been designed for a touch experience. And so a lot of those features here and there are, are sort of simplified. Do you see a stage where we could get to where some of these apps have a desktop mode when plugged into the Magic Keyboard? Or are you committed to the simplicity that is necessary for a touchscreen experience? I think we're very committed to that. Um, but I also don't think it's a, it is a clear trade-off, right? I don't think it has to be simple to the point of not being functional in order to still be great with touch. And I think we've kind of proven that this year with iPad OS 26, where some people may have thought it would not be possible to build as robust of a windowing system as we have on Mac and make it touch friendly. But we've taken the time and we re-architected the underlying system from an engineering perspective to make it is just as uh, immediate as you would expect from a touch device. And then overlaid it with an amazing designed uh, system so that whether you're using touch, a trackpad or a keyboard, it is gonna work great regardless. And that, that is a difficult engineering and a very difficult design challenge for sure, but we think that it is absolutely possible. And we think that's why a lot of customers choose iPad is because it has that bridge between being extremely capable, extremely versatile and extremely flexible while still being very simple and very approachable. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say yes, very committed to making sure that iPad always feels that way and to the, the essence of iPad, but definitely don't see that as a trade-off of having more functionality and greater capabilities and more power as well. So hopefully this year, we've kind of shown that that's the case. I think we miss out on, on a lot of that capability when we bring our traditional computing or laptop criteria when judging the iPad um, as a product. And so it's interesting for me to think about this. Often when I'm talking to students, when they're uh, putting together a case to purchase an iPad and 
you know, technology is an extension of who we are. It amplifies what we do. Uh, a word processor allows us to put our thoughts down on a page and then edit our thoughts. An Excel spreadsheet or numbers spreadsheet allows us to take number and data, numbers and data and process them in ways our brains couldn't do alone. And I'm always interested to see how computers amplify what we do. And a lot of what I just described is associated with traditional computing. But when I think of iPad, I think of a different kind of, I think of a different set of tasks. I remember students seeing me taking notes on the iPad and I didn't even need to say a word to them. And next week they got an iPad because it was able to do something that they hadn't seen before. And so my final question to the both of you is, what's the most interesting way you've seen someone use an iPad that's made you think, that's it. That's what this device is for. <laughs> maybe I'll start, I'll start first, Ty, uh, and maybe you can hop in if you have anything else to add. But um, I guess the thing that I find so exciting about iPad is that if you ask 10 people uh, why they love their iPad, um, you'll very likely get 10 different answers. It is, it is indispensable for people um, who love to take notes. And you're, you're having that coffee shop moment. People see it in action. They see you doing it. And it's like, wow, like I would love to try that myself. Mm -hmm. um, it is this amazing canvas for designers and, and illustrators. Um, with the Ultra Retina XDR display that we introduced last year, it's a reference grade display for film and television production. So no longer do you have these incredibly clunky, expensive you know, reference monitors. You can use your iPad Pro as a reference quality monitor on set. Um, for an industry professional like um, a salesperson or uh, a tradie, I think I'm using the terminology properly for Australia, uh, who is out and about um, you know, working on, um, you know, they're, they're on the road, they need to get work done. The combination of a large display, but also cellular connectivity um, makes it so much more capable than other forms of computing. Um, and it's in virtually every airplane you see flying. It is a, a mobile flight bag for, for the pilot and the co-pilot um, in almost every commercial uh, jet you see, um, you see up there. So it's not really one thing. The thing that always just strikes me is the, the versatility of iPad that I think is so compelling. You know, one thing that isn't lost on us at Apple is we also are users of these products ourselves. Uh, I've been using iPad since it was introduced. Um, and I've actually sometimes surprised myself of where I've taken it and how I've used it. Um, there's a picture of me editing slides in Keynote on the middle of a ski slope in Tahoe using 5G connectivity. And like, I look at that picture sometimes and I'm like, I could never have imagined that it was possible when I was younger. And with iPad it is, you can truly take this device anywhere that you want it to go um, and do amazing things with it. So. Uh, I would say there's lots of interesting places to do it, and we encourage everyone to go and find those places themselves too. Cool. Thank you. That's all the questions from my end.